module for us is our pro biomechanics session where we evaluate, look at, critique, complement even professional cyclist biomechanics. None of this is meant negatively, by the way. We're just uh, making observations. Uh, we work with a lot of professional um, riders um, and um, some of them have very particular biomechanics. So it's just a way of looking at that. Jules. So, yeah, so uh, we've been spoiled this summer with lots of cycling. Um, so I spend a lot of my spare time looking at cyclists. And um, one of the, uh, I guess, one of the things that separates a good rider, a brilliant rider in some ways, is not just their fitness, it's also the way they can cope with their biomechanics. Um, a, lot of, um, got, a lot of our customers come to us and they say, yeah, but all those pros, they're amazing, they're perfect specimens. Uh, and we say to them, well, not, not exactly, but they can overcome these, uh, their, these issues, whatever they may be, uh, and go on to great things and win world championships. Um, so we thought we'd talk about um, three riders today, two very well known uh, and one not so well known, but still a great talent. And I don't think we've seen, we'll see a lot from him next year. Uh, we just wanted to compare their, what's going on and what we might find um, um, of interest and what we, could do, what we may do to help those riders out if they came into our studio. So I'm going to start with uh, Lance Armstrong. Um, um, the uh, rider everyone l hates to love and I will um, just going to show you a little clip now uh, we're going to run through these clips uh, it's about compensation it's about how can you compensate uh, on a bicycle uh, what can you do to correct your biomechanics and really the only thing you can do is change your foot angle and your foot position there's nothing else you can do really you can't if you move your hands it doesn't really make any difference there's nothing else you can do so we just have a look at this guy here Lance this is really in his comeback. I'm going to put it into slow-mo and I might just rewind it a little bit. So here he is climbing. Bear in mind this is probably the most fastidious athlete there ever was. Um, and we're just looking at his, le his leg angle here. Oh, there it is over here. So it's 138. So uh, as we said before in our earlier, uh, our first episode, a little bit on the low side. Foot angle 14 degrees. You're like, okay, that's fine, that's okay, nothing wrong with that. He's working hard, pushing away. But then we look at his foot angle as it comes over at the top of the pedal stroke here, and we're around about, well, it's moved a bit on this one, okay, 43 degrees. Now, normally you'd expect the foot to follow the same angle all the way through the pedal stroke. So what he's doing here is actually pulling up on the pedal stroke uh, to generate power which is all in everybody's book. That's like, no, you don't do that because it doesn't work because you're using your hip flexors. Um, so here we have Lance. Let's get back to the beginning. And what does that do? Look, hip angles closed off, saddles a long way back, closing everything off here. Remember, we used to get back pain. There you go. I wonder why. But he's plantar flexing on both feet and he's compensating for something. Now you... Can you explain what plantar flexing is? It's toe down. So he's pushing the toe down here to get rigidity in his ankle to get that stability. If he lets his heel drop, he's going to lose stability and then he's going to lose power and his knees aren't going to track properly. So all, all this, of course, is unconscious. He doesn't know he's doing it, does he? Or no, he's not said, oh, today I'm going to go out and do this. So you remember we used to see him um, in the mountains. He'd ride up a mountain standing up the whole way. Possibly because he was an ex-runner, possibly because he could plant a flex that foot and lock that foot. Um, so that's Lance. The thing about this though is he could run marathons after cycling 112 miles because he's an ex-triathlete. So you'd affect his, you'd assume his bio, foot mechanics were okay, but this would suggest they're not. And that's why I get a bit confused about this. Why does he do this? And with his right foot, when you see him pedaling, if you see him from the front, he's like this. And there's another man who does this as well. Well, there's a few in the peloton, but the next one we're going to look at is this fellow here. Hey, anyone know who he is? Peter Sagan, in case you didn't know. And this is him winning stage 10 of the Giro this year. So the good thing about this is you don't normally see him in a, that often in a breakaway, not in the, these races. You do in the classics, but uh, 
what we're looking at here is his plantar flexion on his feet, look, here, and the movement in his hips. Let's just get this guy through, there we are. Come on, speed him up. So I took a little um, snapshot here, leg extension, oh maybe not there. Anyway, we came out at 142, which you would say is on the low side. Here, yeah, look. And I don't know if you can see, but when he he's doing something very similar to Lance in that he's pulling back here, look, on that foot. He's lifting that ankle. So that again suggests he's losing contact on that downstroke. He's looking for contact and to stabilise his plantar flexing. And that's how he gets his stability. But look at this, how he's... No support for his pelvis here. He's dropping off the saddle, so he's using his feet to give him stability on that bike and his, the middle of his back. You always see him riding like this, locked out. This is where he's getting stability. And he's pedaling like this. Amazing how he does it, because he's, as a, I mean, you see those videos of him doing his weights and all his stretching and everything, but on a bike, I have to say, he's not look, he doesn't look amazing. Okay, can we go forward to the clip where we, get, we look at him from behind, Jules? So, so what it strikes me is, is that he's twisted on the bike. So the left hip and knee is abducted, pulling out. So he's twisting round and to the left on the bike. And is, is that the source of his instability or is that the way he's compensating? I think it's an, an effect of his instability in that he's, yeah. he's dropping to the right side yeah. and he's working harder to stabilise himself on the right and then his left side is coming out. So it's making his left knee abduct, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And if you look at the saddle contact, I mean, I know this is all bets are off, anything goes at this point of the race, but he's got no saddle stability whatsoever. He's sitting on the nose of the saddle, look. The left hip and knee is abducted and he's twisting round. Yeah. I mean, as you say, he's fixing with his upper body. But how he overcomes that, I mean, it's miraculous, isn't it? Yeah. For hour after hour on yeah. the bike. I mean, so. you, you wouldn't choose those biomechanics, would you? No. But no, this, no is, offense. this leads us to the subject <laughs> that we're talking about is he, he's, he's, taken, he's compensating amazingly well for poor biomechanics. Not that they're poor. Poor? No. Not perfect. But... Idiosyncratic? I don't know, Philip. But you can see, look how that knee comes in here. Look, yeah. he's coming in. So there's all sorts of things going here. And look at the foot angles, top of the, bottom of the stroke, top of the stroke. Very similar to Lance. So to generate, he's losing power at the bottom and he's pulling up. So there's two brilliant compensators. Here's a young man who's, um, now that uh, Michael Lando is, is out of the frame, he's doing very well for Barmain McLaren, um, Pelo Bilbao. And this young man doesn't compensate in any way whatsoever. Now this is not the best video, sorry. Um, but he has... He's probably got a similar foot um, type to the other two guys, um, but he's not plantar flexing, he's not stabilizing himself in the pedals. So he's letting his heels drop, and that's what's making him move around on the saddle here. Look, look at all this movement we've got here. So that lack of compensation is not a good thing? No. Ah, oh, this is a good bit. Now that he's pushing, he's out the saddle. Look how that foot changes its angle, how he... It rolls in at the ankle there. Now, I'm not sure what he's got in his Oh, wow. Shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see it. Yeah, absolutely. So there was another shot earlier in the Tour de France as well where he's climbing. Oh, look, here we go. Look, Pello. Look at those heels drop. Look at those feet roll. Oh, look at that. Rolling in. And somewhere in between the two, we've got Ben Swift, who does pronate, who, but not excessively like Pello, but, uh, and he doesn't plant a flex like Peter. So what, what we're saying is these two are surviving by compensating. This guy, what they are doing is harnessing more power. This guy's leaking power. If he could stabilise his feet more in the shoes, he would be able to generate more power and he'd be up there with these two. I'm pretty sure we could find five or ten watts there. But you'd have thought that Bahrain would have that covered, wouldn't you? Well, you don't know, do you, what they've got in their shoes. A lot of them are led by um, folklore and myth. There's a particular German brand of... Um, Footbeds that go in their shoes, which Swiss, isn't it? 
They could be Swiss, which cause even more problems than this. So they exacerbate this issue and probably don't stabilize this guy on the front, so he has to compensate. But what you need to do is you need to, um, all, the, all the saddle height and all that comes afterwards, but you have to stabilize the foot in the shoes by bringing the ground up to the first met. And both of these guys would um, um, do well to do that in their shoes. But with Pello, unfortunately, he's, he's not as stable here as Peter because he's not stabilizing his feet. So when you say stabilized jewels, you mean stabilized laterally like this? Yes, yes. So what you're, you're talking about locking the foot in laterally? Exactly that, yes. So the foot has to be stable and fixed so the ankle can be fixed. If you can't, but the foot needs to be relaxed. These feet on Peter aren't relaxed, so he's fixed, he's holding himself like this to get that stability in the ankle. So for all these guys, proper foot control is the key to um, success, I'd say, unless you can compensate like him or Lance. So yeah, that's the end of my observation. Okay, so we're looking at three interesting cyclists here, and how do we wrap this up? Um, the first thing to say is that humans didn't evolve to ride bikes. Um, and so what's happening is these people are all making unconscious adaptations, below the radar adaptations. Their body is adapting to where it finds itself and trying to perform at the highest level possible. And this is all totally unconscious. And some of it is very unhelpful. Um, and I guess what Jules is saying, which I would agree with, is that there is probably some improvements that could be made even at this level. I mean, Lance and Peter Sargent weren't shabby, aren't shabby cyclists. No. But even then, there's, a, there's advancements and improvements that can be made. Um, you know, and I'm not saying you could make Sargon ride so in an untwisted way, um, but you could certainly give him a better feedback from the shoe, foot, and pedal yeah. interface. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think it just shows that um, these guys they can tolerate those imperfections. They can adapt. They can conquer them, and then they can go on to greater success. But if you can't, come and see CycleFit.